Okay, I promised you a story today, so I'm going to tell you a story. I have a whole bunch to say about the wonder of the seas. I'll, I'll save that for a couple videos this week. But here is my... You see? I, I, uh, I even went out and shoveled and everything this morning, and I did my hair. I'm a little more presentable today. So, uh, yeah, my horrible, horrible flight experience flying home. So most of you who cruise know that usually by nine o'clock, they want you off the ship. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Now, normally I would spend a day in Fort Lauderdale and just fly home the next day. This time my flight was not till four o'clock in the afternoon. So I had plenty of time. I knew where I was gonna go for my test. I had between nine o'clock and four o'clock to get it done. That's seven hours, it's right by the cruise port. No problem, right? No issues whatsoever. Great, got to the testing place, nine, uh, yeah, around nine o'clock. Had my test done, completed, finished, 9.30. Went over to the Embassy Suites Hotel where I know a bunch of the, the people there and the, the shuttle drivers and, and everything. They're great, by the way. Embassy Suites, if you're looking for a place to stay. If you're looking for a shuttle system, they have a great one. If you can get to the airport, you can get to Miami, you can get to Fort Lauderdale, you can get anywhere you need to go. They will accommodate you and they were, they've were they always been great to me. Even before I introduced myself or anything like that, they've always been good. So Embassy Suites, the shuttles, everything. Okay, um, and no, it's not paid. <laughs> I have to say it's paid down below if this was sponsored. That's just my, my personal feelings on the Embassy Suites Hotel. Okay, so I have seven hours. I get my test done, I go to the Embassy Suites Hotel, I wait till about one o'clock, just having a drink, uh, sitting at a table, playing actually uh, some video games on my computer while I'm waiting, and then I go to the shuttle, I get driven over the airport, I'm there at 1.30, and I'm checking in. And the guy goes, and, and he says, oh, uh, oh, you're, you're there, and let, let me see if I can uh, get you on an, an earlier flight, because I had just gotten my first notice that my four o'clock flight was now delayed till 5.30. Notice how I said my first notice. Okay, so 5.30, and the guy says, oh, okay, well, can I get you on that earlier flight, blah, 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 and he says, I can get you on an earlier flight, he says, but you're gonna have to change seats, and you're still gonna take the second flight, because my flight is not direct. It had to go to Toronto and then to Ottawa. So my other flight would have been the same time anyway. So what's the difference between sitting down in Montreal, in, sorry, in Fort Lauderdale, or sitting down in Toronto waiting for a flight? He says, I can get you on that early flight, etc. And then I'll get to this whole other conversation later, but I, I said, no, don't worry about it. Keep me on the flights. They're booked. I got my seats. I'm happy with the seat I chose. Let's go for that. Great. Here's my bag. Boom. There you go. And then he says, uh, because you're still early. Now, remember, this is only like 1.30 now. Uh, now my flight's not till 5.30. You can't check your bag until three hours before your flight. So I'm an hour early now but my flight was originally scheduled at four. So he said, tell you what, we'll just take your bag, sir. We'll set it aside over here and we will, we will ship it on when, when it's time to send that through to your flight in the three hour limit. I said, okay, I get nervous at this. In my bags, I have cameras and wires and cables that all affect my carry on stuff, like my big camera and all, all the stuff I used to work with but it makes my backpack really, really heavy to have everything in my backpack. And I can't, like it's gonna be close to 100 pounds. So I, I put a few things in my bag when I fly home. But that got me worried. But uh, it was priority baggage, big priority tag on it and everything, because I was flying business class. So I said, oh, I, I think they're gonna look after business class. They've never lost my luggage yet. Knock on wood, should be okay. Walking through security, as I just get through security, another notice pops up that my flight is now leaving 
at 6.10. It's delayed again. Oh, all right. It's at this point that I start thinking, maybe I should have accepted that earlier flight. <laughs> Apparently there's a weather system between Canada and Fort Lauderdale that was delaying a lot of flights. And I thought it was just Air Canada because all three of their flights were delayed, but Delta was delayed, American Airlines was, I saw it on the board, a ton, a ton of planes were late. So I said, okay, it's a system, everybody got to deal with it. And the airport is not a big airport. It is, uh, I think there's 10 gates roughly where I'm going. And when you start delaying flights and delaying flights, you double and triple the amount of people that are supposed to be there. So it was standing room only in a lot of the place on board. There's really only a couple of dining choices, although they just opened a new one, a sushi place, which is good because there was only a pizzas and hamburger at one point and Starbucks coffee. That's all you had the choice of at one point, but, but it was not bad. And then the delays started ringing into my phone. It actually got changed my flights eight times. Eight times between four o'clock and when they said we were going to leave, 10 o'clock. We didn't leave at 10 o'clock. We didn't even start boarding till after 10 o'clock. But that time never changed on the thing. It turns out we were the last, last flight to leave Fort Lauderdale that evening. So literally, the last flight leaving Fort Lauderdale today. What are the odds of me catching my next flight? I'd say zero to minus 10. And guess what? When I finally got to Toronto, we were the last flight to arrive in Toronto that evening. Everybody else was at least an hour before us, if not longer. So last flight leaving, last flight arriving, and guess what? Uh, yeah, there's no more flights leaving to Ottawa. We're there at 1.30 in the morning. Now I have to go down through security and everything again, which is not open, and check back in, because my flight was the next day at 8 a.m. in the morning. So it's 1.30 in the morning. The hotel attached to the Toronto airport is sold out because of all the delays in the flights today, that night. So I basically had no choice. It would have took me an hour, hour and a half to get to another hotel. And then I have to be back two hours before my flight. You see, it wasn't worth going to a hotel at that point. And of course the airport's closed. So there's hardly any plate. You're not in the area where you're waiting to go to the flight. You're in this corridor that leads to the next security for connections from international flights. So basically we sat in the hallway for seven hours. Well, sorry, let's go five hours. And then we were allowed into through security and I finally got to a chair and I sat there until my flight left at eight o'clock, got me to flo floor, uh, to Ottawa. And yes, lo and behold, my bag did show up. <laughs> so the good job Air Canada, you didn't lose my bag. I did get there. I, I, a, little, I, a little aside, I went out to my car. I, I was only planning to go a week and I parked my car in the long-term parking and I ended up staying a month, right? 28 days. 28 days to park my car at the airport only cost me $150 Canadian. Great price, great deal. Very happy with that deal. Also, my car started. It's been pretty bad weather here and cold and this was not exactly uh, a heated garage. And my car started up, in fact, I, I boosted, in case you're wondering, well, shouldn't it start? Uh, I boosted two people around me that were trying to start their cars, that their batteries and their cars were completely dead. And they were there less, less time than I had been staying at that garage. So very happy with my car performance, very happy my bag arrived, very happy to be back in Ottawa. Just from the tired perspective, I was drained up over 36 hours with no sleep, no lying down, just straight up like this. Uh, it was not good. Okay, but now, now uh, I have to say 
one of the things, <laughs> one of the reasons that this turned out to be almost all my fault for being a nice guy. So if you want to find that out, uh, just don't forget, I, let me, I got to do it. it. Hit the subscribe button for all these kind of stories, behind the scenes and all this, plus cruise news, plus vlogs of the ships. Was the Wonder of the Seas all it's cracked up to be? Or was there a disappointment on board? Well, stay tuned, because those videos are coming. You want to see them? Hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost anything. Doesn't give you emails. Just, just helps the channel out. Helps me out myself. And I'd really, really appreciate it. Okay. Being a nice guy sometimes, the first thing that went through my mind when the, when the gentleman said, look, uh, we've had a lot of cancellations today, like delays in flights and that, and people are... You know, we can, we can maybe fly you out of Fort Lauderdale earlier, uh, but you're still going to have to take your, your later flight in Toronto to Ottawa. And, and, he, I, and he mentioned that there was a lot of people that were trying to get on these flights, but because I was business class that they would allow me, you know, to move first because I had priority because I paid through the nose for those tickets. And the first thing to my mind is, you know, if people have been here all day and they've been waiting to get to Toronto and, you know, and, and it's, it's not going to make a difference to me because my second flight is still going to be the exact same flight. Why not just let somebody else have that seat so they can get back to, to home and have a, a better time? That was the thought that went through my mind. Somebody else will be very happy because they're flying out and it really makes no difference to me. Little did I know that my flight would have got canceled seven times uh, to the point where we almost canceled the whole day uh, and would have had to stay in Fort Lauderdale another night. Uh, I would have been very angry with that. However, that was the thought process in my mind. I'm thinking, I think that another person may, may have more need to get back to Ottawa I can't change my second flight. It's still gonna get me back to Ottawa at the same time anyway. Just just keep where I am. No problemo. <laughs> and then kabam! Big problemos. <laughs> so yeah, that's the story of my long, long day flying back to Canada. And, and, and you know what? It was like 90 some degrees in Fort Lauderdale. It was sunny in Ottawa when I talked to my nephews. It was puzzling as to why there was such a delay, but there must have been some storm front between the two of us, and it delayed us immensely. But yeah, sometimes being that nice guy, sometimes it just bites you in the butt. <laughs> well, I hope you appreciate this little lighthearted story. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button till next time. Have yourself a safe and a great vacation. And let's hope your flights are on time.